So um, I'm not going to talk about my background a lot. It's sort of woven into the speech, but uh, I would like to explain why I changed topics at the last minute. Um, if those of you who read the brochures early, um, I was supposed to talk about education and online education, which is something I really believe in. Uh, and there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there, but I realized that I was um, missing a great opportunity because about a year ago, I gave a speech at the Danforth Center uh, on a topic uh, that they assigned to me. They said, they said, Would you, could you give a speech with the title Seeds of Change as uh, part of a uh, week-long uh, sort of international biology uh, convention. And uh, they gave me the topic, and I gave this speech, and it was probably uh, the most important speech I think I had ever given. And unfortunately, uh, one of the people in the audience passed out, and the guy who picked him off the ground was a videographer, so it was never recorded. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I agonized about this because I really wanted to have a, uh, a transcript of this because I thought it was important um, for some of the stuff that I was doing and uh, some of the stuff that we were trying to do in St. Louis. But um, never got a copy, so I thought, well, I'll do, the, I'll do the speech again somewhere else. But then I realized that I can't give this speech anywhere but in St. Louis, and I don't get to talk in St. Louis these days very much. Uh, I'm overseas or in some other city, but um, I get very St. Louis audiences. Um, so uh, one of the things I hate is speakers who repeat everything. But in fact, today, if you were at the Seeds of Change, how many were at the Seeds of Change? Okay, so. You five people are going to be really disappointed. <laughs> um, uh, but the rest of you, hopefully, um, will uh, hear something that I feel very important, uh, that I feel very strongly about. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm breaking all the rules. I'm starting off with an apology, and I'm going to start off with another apology, which is it's sort of a negative thing. You know, well, they gave me this title, Seeds of Change, and I thought about that for a minute, and I thought, well, that's that's kind of a downer, right? You know, I grew up in St. Louis. Why, why change? What, what's wrong with this city? What's, what's going on here that, that would imply that we need to change? And um, so I looked at, you know, sort of the things that I was doing in the city and, and some of the things I was seeing around me. And, you know, there's a lot of positive stuff going on. Arch Grants. How many of you guys have heard of Arch Grants? This, this is a world-class funding source for small companies. And we are attracting companies. The first group of Arch Grants recipients has already been in a year. We have fantastic companies uh, that have been attracted from literally all over the world to St. Louis. They're starting up here. Um, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, this Saturday, um, I'm judging the second group of uh, Arch Grants recipients. We're going to give um, $50,000 grants uh, to 20 companies, or maybe 15. I, we're not quite sure yet. Um, or actually, I'm not sure. Somebody knows. But, uh, I've, I've read through, and there's some fantastic companies uh, that are doing some really groundbreaking stuff, and they're going to move back to St. Louis, or found here in St. Louis, in order to get this money. It's, it's a fantastic program. Uh, Cultivation Capital, you know, when I started uh, Square back in uh, 2009, there was really no good source of funding in this town, if you were a tech company. Uh, and now there are several, but uh, Cultivation Capital uh, has funded a lot of uh, great companies. Lockerdome is, is going to be a home run. We've already had one company, Jay Barra, uh, which just changed its name to Gainsight. Uh, they're, they're killing it. They're, they just got a big round of funding out of, uh, um, out of Silicon Valley, and they're, they're probably going to be a billion, billion dollar uh, company. So things are improving. Things, things are looking pretty good. And the Kauffman Center, or the Kauffman Foundation, which ranked us um, next to last in entrepreneurship in 2009, uh, gave us sixth place in 2010, which is, you know, great. First derivative on that one, right? You're really improving. Um, and then the Danforth Center itself has been attracting world-class scientists and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, talent to the region. So I looked at the topic, Seeds of Change, which was, it was given to me by the Danforth Center, and I thought, well, it's going pretty well, right? But I'm trained as a scientist. My, my father, uh, you know, he's an engineer. I think of myself as an engineer, even though I do all this other stuff. And, um, you know, at my core, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a scientist. I believe in numbers. I believe in objective measures. So I looked for an objective measure of our town. And the best one that I could come up with 
was immigration. Um, because I think immigration is unbiased. I think, I think people vote by their actions. If they live somewhere, if they move somewhere, um, the, the, they're, they're making a statement. And so what I decided to do was track movements and see really how our, our region was doing. Um, and I broke this down into three areas. I looked at the uh, population overall, um, and then I looked at selected subgroups that I thought were important, and then finally I traced down to a couple of individuals, and I decided to trace their path and say, well, you know, how are these people voting uh, with their presence or lack thereof? And uh, starting off overall, this, if you recognize it, is the original cover for Jonathan Franzen's great novel, The 27th City. And uh, I was in high school when this came out. I see a couple of nods around the room. Um, so Franz is one of the you know, great writers of our times, and this was his first real big blockbuster book. And the, the title uh, was sort of controversial back in 1984 when it came out because he went through a ranking of, Saint Lu of, of the major cities and found St. Louis you know, 27th on the list. And we don't think of ourselves as a 27th city. So this was very controversial uh, when he titled his novel this. And as a result, you got a lot of press in St. Louis. It's like, oh, you know, he's not in the city. And you know, we're not really number 27. But in fact, um, that was back in 1984. And when I looked for St. Louis in a rank of the top 50 cities, we're not even ranked anymore. We're so far out of the top tier that these days, I, I mean, there's supposed to be a follow-on slide to this, right? There's supposed to be, and now we're here. Couldn't find it. The list, the lists stop at 50. And we ain't there. So somebody's voting here, right? Somebody's leaving. Somebody's not doing something. There's some measures behind these numbers, and those measures are trending in the wrong direction. So I looked at that. I got a little concerned, and then I started thinking about another interesting. Uh, Demographic. Do you guys see this published this morning? I pulled this out of the paper this morning. This is the uh, 2020, uh, 2010 census data of where folks live. Uh, there are black folks, there are blue dots, there are white folks, there are red dots. There are a few other ethnicities, but from the back of the room, it's kind of hard to see that. But look at that. We're the fifth most segregated city in the nation. You can, you can almost see Del Mar Boulevard right there. I'm serious. Um, somebody's voting. Somebody's, somebody's doing something. Or somebody's not doing something. This system is not correct. It's certainly not getting better. Um, and I... Sorry. Um, I live... Uh, on the south side of Del Mar, but I got married on the north side, and my business, Third Degree Glass Factory, uh, is right on the border. And um, I've looked across that street many times, and as a matter of fact, uh, looking across that street was one of the things that led me to, uh, to found Square. But this is a real problem. Actually, it's, it's a problem. It's something that everybody says is bad, but it's also somewhat good. Um, and I, thank you. Um, how's it good? How's it good? Um, so segregation isn't necessarily bad. It depends, it depends on where you're segregated, right? Like segregation is probably pretty good if you're right here. So um, I married a uh, person from, uh, from Europe. She grew up in uh, Sweden. And when we met, she was living in Japan. And I had convinced her to move to St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, so the first thing she does is, we're in St. Louis. She's like, okay, they got an arch. And you know what the next thing she finds is? One of the 10 deadliest cities in the country. We were number two at the time. You know? Yeah. And uh, she's like, Jim, I know there's a handgun problem in your country, but it seems to be particularly bad in your neighborhood. And I was like, not my neighborhood. We're number, five, we're number five in segregation. <laughs> I'll keep you on the right side of Del Mar, and everything will be fine. So there's sort of an upside to this. I'm not saying you want to cultivate it, but I'm saying that 
it's it's indicative of something that I, I think it's 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 not just black and white. There are some there are some statements here about how we choose to live and what we choose to do and the changes we choose to make uh, that are reflected in these statistics. And then I looked uh, a little further. Instead of just gross populations, I started looking at select populations. And one of the populations that I really uh, like to file are highly educated, highly talented people. Um, so my example of this is a guy named Bob Lee. And Bob is fantastic. Bob, uh, you know, grew up in St. Louis. He was um, a guy that actually I met the night of my wedding. We were, uh, after, after the ceremony, we all went down to the city museum, which is probably one of the coolest places uh, on the planet, and um, sitting there drinking beer, and I run into Bob Lee, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm with my friend Jack, and we're talking about uh, Square, and, and Jack introduced me to Bob Lee in the following way. Uh, he said, Bob Lee is the best Java programmer in the world. Okay, now Jack's not a guy who uses superlatives very much. I took this